Let's take a look at what it takes to set up I2C devices or I2C devices on the Big O' Bone Black Rev C card. Also got some instructions in my wiki and I'll put a link down in the show notes to the Rev B card. I haven't tried it. I do have a Rev B card. I just haven't tried it yet. The basic problem is that not all I2C devices are enabled by default on the Res or the Big O' Bone Black. Uh, the other devices need to be enabled before they are used. Um, I wanted to use I to C1, the physical I to C1. Um, there's a little bit of a caveat there. That's what it physically is connected on the card, but I really wasn't sure what I squared C port it was from the software perspective. So I decided to enable all three. And the little key secret here is to edit this file for the Rev C. It's a different file for the Rev B card. But if you edit that file, it adds you want to add this line here and i tried it without the opdargs equal quiet and the drm.debug-7 and it just didn't work but once i did that everything worked uh, you have to set the cave manager enable part number and then all three ports on and then that did the trick uh, you can tell that it showed up after you do that oh and you have to reboot the machine of course uh, added those three keys, reboot the machine, and if you do that, you can then list the devices that show up in the system. And those devices are all three, I to C, 0, 1, and 2. Of course, remember, you have to reboot. It won't work unless you do that, I believe. Uh, if you want to look at what devices are there, you can look at, uh, this is an interesting command too, uh, let's see what it comes back with. It comes back with all three and says that they're all three there. I'm not really sure how useful the mapping there is. It does something. I don't quite know what it is. But if you want to look at each of the three ports, then you can use this command. It's the IDC detect command. The dash Y says ignore the yes prompt and just assume yes. Uh, dash R, I think, is read the bus. And zero is the bus number. So those numbers would be zero, one, two. If we do zero, it comes back with ports at 40 or 24, 34, 50, and 70. If we do the same thing with the one, it comes back with devices at 50, 4, 5, 6, 7. I think this device at 50 is my configuration EEPROM that's on the card, the personality EEPROM. I think you can set this all up with the vice tree too, but it's very, very complicated or it seems to be. I've just got a very basic setup in the part and people can do something different with it if they want. But if I do the bus two, I have a device that shows up at address 20 and that is where my MCP 23008 card, the I to C IO eight card is located at address 20 and it does show up so i've got a little bit of code that i wrote to exercise that card and it's this mcp code let's take a look at that it blinks a light on that i to c i wait card and i'll show that in a minute here uh, you run it with python and then the file name you have to edit that boot file, as I mentioned. I put notes in here for that. And this will be up on the GitHub. The SM bus is the I squared C bus itself. Uh, import time because it does a timing loop in here. If we go down, it's function main, which is at the end, called by this wrapper that calls main. Uh, here's the setup of the MCP 23008 registers. They're not all used, but they're all defined here to make it easily expandable. This is the little trick that, that sort of happened, and we noticed when we did the scan of the bus that it came back on bus 2. Even though it's physically connected up to IO1, it's a little quirk of the BeagleBone, the way that it works. Uh, the address 20 is the address we're using, and then the Write commands are write bytes. You can write longer than bytes as well. It writes a 0, 02 to the IO configuration register. The data sheet for the MCP 23008 
shows the I.O. configuration register bits and all that is setting is if it's writing a two, which I think it was. Yep, writing a two, it's setting the interrupt polarity bit and that's all that it's doing, which on this particular card shuts off the interrupt light. That's physically what it's doing. Um, it's not hooked up in the current setup right now, but that's about all that it does. And we'll double check that. Actually, uh, that, yeah, it sets it to active low so that if, or active high, so that if it's has an interrupt that goes high, uh, not much to do there. The other thing you have to do is set up the IO direction register. IO direction. If you want to have the pin be an output, you have to clear it. So that's why it's writing out a zero zero here setting those bits as outputs. Now this has commented out a couple of reads and those did work. I tested those. Uh, the port B is not true anymore. This was adapted from another one. Uh, so we'll get rid of that. But it would print out a zero or a one as it runs. So what's it doing? It's writing out a one and it's writing out a zero and it has a half a second wait loop between the two. So that works. I believe that'll work fine. We save it and exit out of nano. And if we tell it to run, we can look and see, by gosh and by golly, the light's blinking, very nice. And here it is running on the card. The light is blinking. BBB comms card. Got a stack of the I to C I O eight cards just running with the top one right now. And blinking lights. Success. Now yeah, let's take a look at a transfer using a logic analyzer and see what it looks like. So it's talking to address 20. It's doing a write of the address and it's doing a write of the nine, which is the port number for the OLAT. We saw that back in the code and it's writing out a one. So if we run this a few times, sometimes we might actually catch a zero if we get lucky. Let's see if we caught one this time. Yep, we caught the zero right. The timing looks like it's uh, 100 kilohertz. Not quite sure how to crank the speed up to 400, but 100 is perfectly fine for what I want to do. I'm just testing the, that the port works on the card and it's, uh, it's doing the job. A nice clean transfer and looks like the Beagle Bone is perfectly capable of doing the kind of I2C stuff that you might want to do if you're playing around with something. The code is up in GitHub under my GitHub land boards, land dashboards repo. And it's in the BBB GVS repo specifically. And here's the MCP 23008 code. And you can see it's up there. It's the same code we just looked at. Writing out the pins for the output and all of that good stuff and running forever. Okay, do a control C to get out of it. It'll stop execution of the Python program as usual. This is the BBB comms dash two, BBB dash comms dash two card that I'm using and we're connecting up to these I2C H6 connections right here on the card with a four pin ribbon cable off to the other card, which is the I2C card itself. Uh, this card is fairly simple card. It doesn't do any voltage translation, but it does have a CAPE configuration EEPROM on it, E squared PROM with a right enable jumper. It has also a power light, which I power with a 1K resistor to 3.3 volts to keep it fairly dim. I just don't like bright light shining up at me when I'm looking down, trying to take a look at a card. It connects up a bunch of other GPIO pins down here, as well as on a two by threes. These are GVS connections, ground voltage and signal. Same thing for the top, except it's a four row and it has GV ground voltage and whatever the particular interface is, which is either for UART's transmit and receive, 
for GPIO, it's various GPIO pins. And these UARTs and other ports can be used as GPIO too, depending upon how you configure the BBB output pins and the code you're running. Pretty basic, but it uh, really does the job for easy hookup to the Beagle Bone, and it's a pretty inexpensive card. Here's the MCP23008 card. It's an I2C IO8 card. I'm using it to do pretty simple I squared T testing as well. It's just a nice little application card. It's got two I to C connectors in case you want to daisy chain a second card off of the other connector, but it drives out or receives the GV ground voltage SDA, which is the data line for the I squared C, the S clock line and an interrupt line. Um, has I to C terminators which are installed, they have to be installed for this particular application because the BBB comms two card does not have I squared C terminators on it. Your end device has to, as well as, well as address jumpers. So if you install all three of these jumpers, you get address 20. And if you remove them, you get the various addresses of 20 through 27. This particular card has eight pins, eight GPIO pins. Four of them connect up to LEDs, D0 through D3, and four of them connect up to jumpers, which can be used as inputs or outputs. It's a nice little card, fairly straightforward to use. Um, definitely lets you know that you've got your I2C working, and I use it in a lot of my test station stuff when I'm testing I2C interfaces on cards like our I2C repeater that we have, just to make sure that all of those interfaces are working just fine. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.